The Beach Boys Surfing USA. Leslie Gore's It's My Party. These are two songs that took over the U.S. hit charts in 1963. But the Japanese song Ue wo Muite Aruko, renamed to Sukiyaki, took number one. Sung by Sakamoto Q. It remains the only Japanese song to reach number one in the US. A truly borderless melody. I know this song. This is a uh, sukiyaki. You're gonna make me cry. I, I'm oh, very really? emotional. This this song can so make you cry. Like... Yeah, I have it on a playlist on Spotify. It's in my favorites. Really? Yeah. So. The vocals belong to Sakamoto Q, recorded when he was still a teenager. His style was considered quite unorthodox at the time. However, when the song was released in the U.S., it shot up the charts, landing at number one on Billboard's Hot 100. A remarkable accomplishment nobody could have predicted. This is the story behind a timeless classic that echoes to this day. Everything changed on June 15, 1963. Sukiyaki reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100. The U.S. hit was covered in over 60 countries, selling more than 13 million copies worldwide. Our first vantage point is singer Sakamoto Q. Ueo Muite Aruko quickly turned him into one of Japan's most popular singers. Back then, the Japanese music industry did not consider him a good singer. Still, the production team wanted Sakamoto's vocals. With confidence in his talent, they entrusted their song to Sakamoto Q. A young man's destiny and the song that changed it. This is his story. Precious memories of Sakamoto Q remain at the singer's house. Our crew is welcomed by Sakamoto Q's wife, Kashiwagi Yukiko. Yes. <laughs> ま、It's as if Sakamoto Q and Ueo Muite Aruko were destined to meet. Over half a century ago, Tokyo Tower was still brand new. And the Japanese youth were going crazy for rockabilly music.
One of those in love with the genre was Sakamoto Q. In high school, Sakamoto imitated a famous rock star in front of classmates. The king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley. Sakamoto's love for Elvis helped land him a gig as a roadie for a popular band at the time. Balancing school and roadie work proved difficult, but Sakamoto didn't mind losing sleep in pursuit of his dream. One day, Sakamoto met a woman who would set him on his path to success. Manase Nobuko worked at an entertainment agency. The talented manager was behind numerous stars of the time. She was attending an event after party when she heard about Sakamoto Q. あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
and took his breath away. The show featured famous pop singers like Jimmy Jones and Connie Francis joyfully singing and dancing. Music should have more freedom. Nakamura returned to Japan, newly inspired. Turning on the TV, he found Sakamoto Q on the other side of the screen. テレビに出ている坂本九さんを見て、ニッコリを洗って、そこで人を引きつけるんだけど、その奥になんかすごいセンチメンタルなものがあって、さらにこうみんなを味方に引きつけてしまう。坂本九さんのそれまでにない感じ
これあの最初に坂本九さんに渡された譜面だということなんですけどもだとすると渡した時点では、えー、と今僕らが知ってる「上を向いて歩こう」とはちょっと違うんですよね。えー、と僕らが知ってるのは「上を向いて」っていうあの裏から入る2拍目から1拍目は給付で「上を向いて」っていうのが僕らの知ってるメディアなんだけどこれは「上を向いて」で,で、うがね、頭から入ってて伸びてるんですよ。で、その後も、あーるこうおーおーおーってメロディーで。だけど、おそらく当日朝坂本九さんとリハーサルをしてる中で変えた。と思われる。で、これ画期的なことで、なぜかというと、僕この曲の最大の魅力は。あの、リズムにあると思っていて、日本のそれまでの。歌謡曲って、ほとんどですけど、頭にアクセントが来るんですよ。二拍目がアクセントになるっていうのは、すごく。新しく聞こえたと思うアメリカのジャズとかポップスは2拍目4拍目がアクセントなのねだだだあってこそのことだと僕は思います坂本 said this about the first time he sang the song The song reached deeper into my heart than any other song before Released after the broadcast, the record sold over 300,000 copies in three months. And in 1963, the year before the Tokyo Olympic Games, some exciting international news found its way to Sakamoto. Ueo Muite Aruko. Had become a hit in the US. It was known as the Japanese song Sukiyaki, sung by Sakaki Q. Sakamoto visited the US after the song's success. There, more than 3,000 fans welcomed the singer. The young man from Japan. Was now known worldwide. Renamed Sukiyaki, Ueo Muite Aruko became a worldwide hit. But the song's success wasn't just from a simple title change. It was also the market left on Japanese Americans. Next is the vantage point of a Japanese American who heard Sukiyaki on the radio, David Mas Masumoto. How did a Japanese song top the US music charts? A community that found hope in a song. This is their story. A farm in Fresno, California. Memories from a farmer's youth are carefully stored away. This is the original copy of the 45. Of Sukiyaki.、Uh, this is, we bought it in 1963、uh, because it was the way we could listen to Sukiyaki all the time. Third generation Japanese American David Mas Masumoto was nine years old at the time. So I think part of Sukiyaki for us was it was this love song. About maintaining spirit and enduring. This song became the pride of their community. A local Fresno radio station. Over half a century ago, KYNO was the catalyst for the success of Sukiyaki in the States. John Ostlin, owner of the radio station. 
So, for example, Schwann, this is the DJ that was the first person in America to play sukiyaki. Sam Schwann was a popular radio DJ among local listeners. It all began with the Japanese version of Ueo Muite Aruko. Schwann felt the song would resonate with Fresno listeners. He put it on the air, prepared to face backlash for playing a Japanese song. Well, he loved it, and so we played it twice. And then the phone started to light up. The Japanese pop song plays, and listener requests come flooding in. In particular, there was a huge response from the Japanese American community. A Japanese American elderly home in Fresno. The song is beloved by residents to this day. We were proud, you know, for a song of Japanese, you know, to be chosen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Part of the culture and everything. Mm -hmm. So I always, uh, you know, in my heart, I have, you know, sukiyaki always in my heart. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Japanese started to immigrate to the States in the late 19th century, with many landing at the agricultural town of Fresno, California. And then, everything changed in 1941. Japan's attack on Pearl Harbor brings the U.S. into the Pacific War. Japanese bombed Pearl Harbor, and everything changed for Japanese Americans. Because overnight, suddenly, because of their face, they became the enemy. And the Japanese Americans were caught in the middle. You know, who were they? Were they American or were they Japanese? The forcible incarceration of countless Japanese Americans. The community searched for a sense of identity. Even after the war, things did not get easy for Japanese descendants. In elementary school, Masumoto felt like he was different from his classmates. Regardless of his alienation, he did his best to help his parents. Then, one day, a song started to play on the radio. So I'm working in the shed, and then this song comes on. And it begins very softly, right? A nice little tone. And then suddenly, Japanese comes out of the radio. And I, I remember stopping and thinking, that sounds Japanese. That's like my Jichan Bachan talking, singing on the radio. And I said, no, no, no. That's not Elvis Presley. That's not, you know, uh, the Supremes. That's, that's a Japanese voice on the radio. And I was shocked at that. I remember my grandmother, Obasan, hearing this song, and I wondered what her response would be. And she looked up and she just smiled. Masamoto's first generation Japanese American grandmother worked through the hardship without complaint. It was the first time he saw her face light up like that. 
Rumors about a Japanese song becoming a hit in a rural Californian town reached a major record label. The man behind Ueo Muite Aruko's U.S. release was Dave Dexter Jr., a producer in charge of international music. Andrew F. Jones, an Asian music expert at the University of California, explains Dave Dexter Jr.'s aim. Dave Dexter Jr. in particular, I think he was interested or maybe thought that he could um, develop a market, especially among veterans it, after the war, because mm -hmm. a lot of American GIs, of course, had spent time in Japan mm -hmm. um, between 1945 and early 1950s during the occupation. And I think that he was actually very attentive to that population of listeners who had come back to the U.S., were doing well in a new burgeoning American middle class. Mm -hmm. 18 years after the war, Japanese companies make their way overseas and Americans begin to accept Japan. Dave Dexter Jr. released the record with a title based on a Japanese dish many Americans knew. After sukiyaki became a hit, Sakamoto Q visited Los Angeles. Japanese Americans eagerly awaited his arrival as his song had become the pride of their community. While in the U.S., Sakamoto was featured on a popular music TV show. His dignified performance left a mark on Japanese Americans across the country. And for me, that fit the whole theme of being Japanese American. So you could keep, uh, you understand the sense of loss, the sense of struggle, but the answer and the solution to that uh, is to find love by enduring. And to me, that's what sukiyaki means to me. The pride of the Japanese American community finally echoed across the U.S. The Japanese American community helped make sukiyaki the number one song in America. But that's not the end of the story. In 1980, 17 years after topping the charts, sukiyaki would once again become a hit as a cover by a black vocal duo. Sukiyaki was covered by A Taste of Honey. Janice Mary Johnson was half of the duo. Raised in a disadvantaged household, finding this song pushed her to become a singer. Music's mysterious power to transcend generations. This is Janice's story. Disco music took over the U.S. up until the late 1970s. As the disco scene boomed, a Taste of Honey became the first black group to win the Best New Artist Grammy. Vocalist Janice Marie Johnson. Come on over here. Okay. This is A Taste of Honey's very first album. 
and it went platinum. Actually, it went double platinum, but I don't have the double platinum. Wow, that's <laughs> and this is Sukiyaki. Sukiyaki gave me an opportunity to become a performer. I can't imagine what my life would be without it, because even with the unfairness and the, the stuff that's gone on that brings me to tears, and I'm sorry, I'm not used to talking about this, it still brings me joy. Sukiyaki has always been a part of her life. Janice grew up in unfortunate circumstances in the Los Angeles suburbs. My father passed when I was seven. It was a little bit hard on the money, so we kept getting evicted. And I remember I started a new school and kids wouldn't play with me. Kids can be cruel because I had no dad. She don't have no daddy. <laughs> so that just added insult to injury. At school, she always felt alone. It was around that time when she heard Sukiyaki. It's my mom from, uh, I think it was Holy Name of Jesus, where we were going to school. And this song came on the radio. But I was in the front seat, and the song came on. And I remember turning the radio all the way up. And then my mother would turn the radio all the way down. And I said, but mom, and I'd turn the radio all the way up. And I'm creating these words. And it was the melody, you know? And I'd turn it all the way up. And I insisted that we go by the record store and buy that record. That record would be the first Christmas present her mother ever bought for her. She wore it out listening to it so much. To this part, I mean, it would just change me. And all of a sudden, I'm a different person. It gave me a chance to play a part and to escape from my reality. Sukiyaki took me to a place that was more joyful. Janice felt music's ability to change someone. She decided to become a singer. At 18 years old, Janice formed A Taste of Honey. The group won Best New Artist at the Grammy Awards. Their album sold over a million copies and thrust the group into the limelight. But unfortunately, the disco era came to an end soon after. We would die with disco. Mm -hmm. Every disco act was being dropped mm -hmm. from their record companies. Mm -hmm. So I was trying to switch gears. Mm -hmm. And what better way to do it with my childhood favorite spiritual uplifting song, mm -hmm. <laughs> Sukiyaki. When Janice felt down, the Japanese song always brought a smile to her face. She wanted to cover that song with English lyrics formed from her life. It's all because of you, I'm feeling sad and blue. You went away, now my life is just a rainy day. It was a love song Janice wrote to a lover who left her when the fame was gone. 17 years since the original number one hit. Despite record company objections, Janice closes the album with her cover of Sukiyaki. Sukiyaki was put out as a single a couple of months after the album. It became a long seller, hitting number three on Billboard's Hot 100. Once again, Sukiyaki rang out across the U.S. Hey, look what I have here. Oh, wow. I have something I want to show you. Okay. These are pictures from when I was in Japan with Sakamoto Q. Oh, wow. OK, now this is, of course, you know this beautiful man. <laughs> and this is me. The hit song brought Janice to Japan, where she came face to face with her idol, Sakamoto Q. What do you 
you think happened the first time I met Sakamoto Q? I cried like a baby. Can't you tell? <laughs> he was my childhood idol. What do you think I did? I cried. And he just hugged me. After Janice's cover, Sukiyaki went on to be performed by a variety of singers. The timeless classic continues to reach across generations. A borderless song with a universal message. When the great East Japan earthquake struck, the song once again echoed in support of the affected people. To this day, the song continues to emotionally support the people of Japan. Sakamoto Q, the voice of Ueo Muite Aruko. The singer spent his later years primarily working as an entertainer. His popularity as a TV personality grew, while chances to sing decreased. Sakamoto was conflicted. One day in Shibuya, he visits a small theater. Nakamura Hachidai and A. Rokusuke were holding a concert. Sakamoto could not hide his true feelings in front of two people he owed his success to. I want to sing again. But just five days later, Japan Airlines Flight 123 crashed, taking the lives of 520 passengers and crew members. Sakamoto Q, on his way to a job in Osaka, was on the plane. あの、his song continues to live on inside the hearts of fans worldwide. The Great Hanshin Awaji Earthquake and the Great East Japan Earthquake. で、こうですごく励まされたんですよとか、あの、そういう皆さんから歌に落として励まされたっていう感じですね。<音楽> 
わ。